Hey guys, Come for MC here again. Welcome to another Vita tutorial for Little Big Planet. Uh, today we're going to be talking about something that's pretty common to the the Vita version of the game, and that is these touch uh, interactions and these touch kind of motifs that we often see in these games. So I'm just going to quickly show you what our end goal is: is to just make these touch platforms that interact pretty much how you see it in here, so that we have uh, these touch platforms limited by motion. And we're also going to make sure that that first one we saw with the spring is going to work in multiplayer. And now it might seem like it's really trivial to set something like this up, but there's a couple considerations uh, that are kind of what I consider to be best practices when working with these touch kind of motifs. So what I have set up down here is just I've copied these three motifs down here and I've removed all the logic and the specific mechanics for them. And I'm going to show you what it looks like when we build those from scratch. So I've got a touch block here, and I want to put some springs on it so that players can pull it down and launch themselves up. And so obviously we're going to need some springs for that. Now I don't want to attach the springs directly to the level geometry, just because the level geometry might change throughout development, or it might uh, we might want to copy this and move it somewhere else so we use it again. And we don't want to have to uh, detach the pistons and or the not the pistons the springs and kind of reset them and worry about all the strengths and all that. So what I'm going to do instead is to just place a piece of sticker panel and attach the springs to that and make it look like it's attached to the level geometry. Now you'll notice that I connected this spring on the left with the bottom first and the spring on the right with the top first. And so that made it so there's this nice symmetry when we attach the springs. It's really minor, but if you really... Uh, kind of compulsive about that sort of thing like I am, then that's a nice little trick for you. And now we have this geometry that this this touch block is flush against and that might create some undesirable friction. So what I'm going to do is just take a little piece of material and trim that one down. And the nice thing about how we placed that sticker panel block at the bottom was it's the full width of this this touch block before we cut into it so that it still is uh, kind of lined up to the grid so if we were to move this around that sticker panel still helps us out even though that's slightly off grid here when we cut into the sides so there now we have this touch block and it doesn't have any friction when it rubs like that and one of the first things we have to consider when we we first make a motif like this, if you just attach springs and whatnot, it becomes uh, very difficult to kind of control what players are doing. They can really launch themselves. If you don't have a roof on here, then they could launch themselves out of the level. We want to make sure that we can control that, uh, control the strength, but still allow uh, four players to work with it. So while I'm setting all these strengths and whatnot, I'm just going to take out four sack bots, and this will simulate four players in the level, so we need to make sure that at least it's strong enough to at least support uh, four players like this. So I'm just going to set the costume to player one, uh, just because the default sack bot has a slightly different weight than an actual sack person. And this is a good way around that. So we've got four players here, and we want to limit the strength of this block. So the first thing I'm going to do is throw down, put it all on a microchip to be nice and tidy. I'm going to throw down a microchip and put a touch tweaker on there. And this touch tweaker is going to allow us to limit the speed at which we can move this touch block. I'll just set it to about 40. Hopefully that's close enough. If not, you can tweak it to your liking. So we'll set that strength to 40. And what I'm going to do is I don't want players to be able to pull this, this touch block really far above the equilibrium point that we have right here and I don't want them to smush it all the way down into the floor so I'm just going to use a zero strength piston here to kind of limit the motion this is a really nice trick that we'll end up using again for the next uh, touch block that we're going to set up just attach that there so we attach it to the block and then our sticker panel hopefully that's on our sticker panel yes it is okay so we want the motion to at least reach the the point that it's at right now, which is 17.5. We want it to go a little bit further, I'll just set it to 20. That'll allow it to go up a little bit, and then the piston will stop its motion, and then it'll spring back and settle into place. And then we can also use this to set the minimum that we want it to be contracted. I'll just say 2.5. 
So that'll make it, that'll prevent it from going all the way down. It'll stop it like there. And you can adjust that and whatever in your own levels. And we'll just make that zero strength. So it doesn't actually affect anything. It just limits the motion. And then we'll make it invisible. Okay, so let's see if this right here is enough to send our sack bots flying up that gap. Yeah, it doesn't look like it is. Okay, so we're probably going to have to up the strength on our springs. Because it looks like our springs are just not uh, strong enough. I'm going to guess at 65 and 65. Because that's what the ones I set up above were. Okay, so there, we see the four sack bots are able to jump up and reach that ledge. Now, if we were to just leave it like this, which you can totally do, uh, you'll notice a few problems when we have just one player and they launch themselves up. You'll notice that the launcher is much stronger for one player, and it, if you don't have a roof, it can shoot them straight out the level, which probably isn't desirable if you're working, worrying about level design. So what we're going to do is we're going to dampen this this uh, touch block depending on how many players are standing on it. And we can do that pretty easily with the new player sensor tweaks that we have. We'll just set the radius a little smaller so that it's about uh, where the players would be if they were standing on it. We'll set it to count, and we'll set it to four. Okay, so let's think about what we want the dampening to do. We want the dampening to be really strong when there's fewer players. So that's kind of uh, an inverted statement there, which will require us to invert the output on our player sensor. So if all four players were standing on there, there would be no signal. If there were three players, there'd be a small signal. If there were two players, there'd be a, a little bit bigger signal, and so on, until you get down to one and zero players. And we're going to wire that into a dampening here, uh, anti gravity tweaker. And we'll set the dampening to, uh, let's say, about 60. I'm not really sure. And then we'll change the input uh, action to strength scale. So remember, if there are four players standing on this, there will be no signal coming in. And so there would be no dampening coming, in, coming from this. But if we were to have one player standing on there, uh, that would give us a a 75% signal because one out of the four and it, then it's inverted so you can think about that for a second the math is a little funky but it'll give us a 75% strength on this 60% dampening and again the, the numbers are kind of arbitrary so you just kind of have to play with it until you get it just right so there was 60% okay it looks like it's still a little bit uh, too strong or undampened so we'll just add a little bit more dampening to this. I'm going to guess 70 will be enough. Okay, so there's 70%. Okay, good. So 70% is quite good for our bounce. It gets us enough height to get over onto this ledge, uh, but it doesn't shoot us flying. And again, if we were to have two players, because the dampening is scaled based on the percent or the, the number of players, then it would be a little bit stronger, allowing us to send two players up and so on for three and four players. It's a really nice trick that was discovered by, uh, well, I guess kind of created by a buddy of mine named Asker. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the springs. That's how I make any of these springs mecha spring mechanics here. And it's a little more complicated than just throwing down springs and praying that you get the strengths right. Okay, so well, let's move on. This one is uh, a little bit simpler than the springs, but it's, uh, we, there's still a few tricks we can use. We want this touch platform to move back and forth along this groove that I've made here. Now the groove doesn't actually do anything. It's just completely, uh, there's nothing here. It's just completely you know, visual to allow the players to understand what the range of motion will be when we move this platform around. Instead, what we're going to do, similar to how we did with the uh, spring, is we're just going to use a piston to limit the range of motion. Just going to throw this over here. Make sure that it's uh, static and invisible. So set the opacity down to zero. And then I'll throw a piston running from that to my touch button. Now that's as far as we want it to be able to go. So our maximum length will be already set. We just need to worry about what the minimum length is going to be. And it looks like it's going to be about 2.5. 
That's accurate. So 2.5 will get us right to there. And it, you probably could have just set it to zero. This uh, wall would have made it flush and it wouldn't have been able to go any further. But if you didn't have a wall that it was butting up against, but you still wanted to accurately limit the range of motion, this is how you could do that with the piston. Okay, so now, um, right now we've got, oops, I've got to set my piston strength to zero. Once again, zero strength, and we'll just make it invisible while we're in here. Now, if you were to just leave it like this with the piston, you'll notice that it's very uh, freely able to move around, and it'll be affected by players landing on it, which isn't what we really want. So instead, we're going to create a really simple system to to allow players to still flick the platform back and forth, because that's a, a really nice way of handling these if I want to flick it and then make it to the other side without having to drag it the whole way. Uh, it'll allow us to do that, but it'll still... Uh, stop and freeze that platform in place when we don't want it moving. So I'll just uh, first use a touch sensor and we're going to tweak this to pick up. So we want this to deactivate when we pick it up. This whole dampening that we're going to set up, we're going to lock that in place. But we don't want it to be locked in place when we're picking it up. So we'll just invert the output and it's set to pick up. And the other condition that we don't want to do, we don't want this, we don't want this to be locking in place if it's already moving. Like if we flicked it, we want it to keep moving until it comes to a stop at the end of its motion. So the way that we're going to do that is to use a motion sensor or a speed sensor, and we'll just set this to say 0.5. So if it's below a speed of 0.5, oops, I'm really close to the camera. There we go. If it's set to a speed of 0.5 in any direction in this case, it will stop moving. And we'll just throw an AND gate in there. So if it's not moving, and it's not being picked up, then we're going to dampen it. And the way we're going to dampen it is again with an anti-gravity tweaker. So there we've got dampening 100%. Wire that in there. See what's going on here. It looks to be too strong. Oh, I forgot. I've got my speed sensor backwards. Remember, I said when it's not moving above 0.5, so we gotta invert that. There we go. So, there, now when we flick our platform, it's able to move back and forth. And if we stop moving, it'll stop and be dampened, and so the player won't be able to land on it, push it back and forth. Okay, so it's pretty much the same idea for what we want with the up and down moving platform. So we're just going to start by copying this over. The up and down part. And then we'll put our piston on here to limit the range of motion. Let's put it there. That's a good spot. Set the opacity to zero. Make sure it's static, of course. And then throw our piston on. The maximum range is already set up. The minimum looks like it's going to be 10. And then, of course, set the speed to be zero. Invisible. So now we're going to allow the range of motion to be from there to there. And again, you could trim this corner. I think I might have already done that. Looks like I did not. But you could trim the little piece of material here so that you don't get any friction involved with that. Let's see what we got. So we can move it around. We can stop. It'll lock into place. But you'll notice a little mistake here. If it's moving slowly downward, Ah, it looks like it's not going to work. Um, but you, you will notice slight little problems there if uh, it's moving slowly downwards. Oh, I think I know how to do it. I can stand on it. And then slowly move it down. Oh, well, it's not really causing a problem right now. But if you don't lock that into place and it's moving a little bit, uh, players wait 
Uh, let me think about this. Uh, I think it's fine. But you, d you will notice a problem when players launch up like that. It really launches them. It can put you outside the level. So we can just apply a a, a touch uh, peeker on that to limit the speed that we can move it. It doesn't really matter what that is. I can say maybe 25 or so. We'll just drop the touch tweaker on there. Set the minimum or the maximum movement speed to 25. And hopefully that'll prevent us from launching players up too quick. So we still got the movement. We can stop and lock it in place. You can still kind of launch them up, but not too much. So you can just make sure that you don't. You haven't allowed players to launch themselves out of your level. And that's pretty much it for these uh, these touch platforms. Um, let's go to the lines. There we go. I think the trickiest is dealing with these uh, these spring platforms, just because you have to worry about the strength and multiplayer and all that. Uh, but these platforms are pretty straightforward, and this piston, the zero strength piston, is a really nice trick for for limiting the range of motion on these touch platforms, and then just making sure that we lock these platforms in so. If it's not all the way at its range of motion, then players will still be able to stand on it without it moving around on them. So I hope uh, at least you learned a little bit. This one isn't too complicated, but it's still pretty useful. And it's uh, what I consider to be best practices when building with these touch platforms and move around. You can use a similar, uh, similar technique with these back and forth moving platforms if you've got rotating platforms you can dampen them when they're not spinning in this case it's when they're not moving you can dampen the rotating platforms when they're not spinning um, but yeah I think uh, I think I've pretty much covered it I hope you guys at least gave it a little bit of info from this and if you have any questions be sure to follow the link in the description because I do check that more often than I do check the video Alright, uh, take care guys, hopefully we'll have another video soon, and enjoy! The tutorials will unleash not only exciting tools and objects, but knowledge and the deepest secrets of the cosmos.